Credo che il mio primo compito è simile a chi apre le porte di casa per accogliere degli ospiti. I believe that my first task is similar to one who opens the door of his house, that is to welcome the guest. First, your attention goes to the people who come into your home for the first time because they need a particular welcome. Therefore, I appeal to these people and I know that there are a few here. I want to explain to them the work that we are doing. We call these meetings the School of Christianity because we are convinced that Christianity must be learned and even more, we must learn Christ. We must not take it for granted that we already know, which we already know. This learning assumes a style from school. Every year there is a text that is prepared. And there is an explanation of the text. And then there needs to be a follow-up meeting between you in groups. And then it is certainly necessary for each person to read it. for each person to seek to understand it and especially come to the understanding that comes from a dialogue between people who become friends and if possible that they communicate not only ideas but experiences that they have had Together, all of this creates a Christian community. So today, for me, it is my part of the job to explain the text. We are at the second chapter, entitled, The Truth of Love Revealed. This evening I will try to explain the first part of the second chapter, from page 33 to page 50. It is a question of understanding how you put together truth and love. The Pope has rightly emphasized the union between love and joy, happiness. We seek also to say that in order to have a joy of love, it is necessary that the love is true. We understand it quite easily, but we must deepen what constitutes this truth of love. I will proceed with subsequent reflections. Already Pope Benedict XVI, when he wrote his first encyclical, he deliberately chose the theme of charity, in Latin, dos caritas est. He said this, between love and the divine exists some reaction because love promises infinity, eternity. It promises a reality great and totally different with respect to the daily life of our existence. But the path is not to let oneself be overwhelmed by instinct. This is the first step. 
Today it is not difficult to feel that love is divine, has all rights, wins. Everyone has the right to love. Everyone must be respected in the love that he or she seeks, that finds that he or she wants to experience in whatever manner. All of these statements, we have heard them. Where is the error? In the fact that instead of saying, God is love, we say, love is God. It seems the same thing, but then we realize that it is not the same thing, and it is not faith which contradicts the affirmation, affirmation that God is love. But the experience, the documentation of how much pain, of how much suffering, and how much pain is produced in many stories that were love stories. I believe all of you, if you have the opportunity to read newspapers, I do every morning, you cannot be impressed, you cannot not be impressed by the mass of pain, suffering, violence within the family. In the last few days, newspapers are really full of tragedies, of crimes between girlfriend and boyfriend, between husband and wife, between parents and children, even between parents and very small children. It gives me a sense of pain. It is as to assist in something diabolical that is happening. Today I read about the guy who asked his friend to kill his parents and he was weeping to the lawyer and said nobody will want to love me any longer nobody will want to be my friend so you want to understand how that as terrible as what has happened the question, who could want to be loving to me after what I have done, is a real question. It is here that the divine insinuates violently, overwhelmingly, because perhaps nobody would have the courage. I am convinced that God would say to him, I still love you. This is not for generalized goodness, but to introduce us to the truth with which we must achieve. Discussions on love are endless. Poems, novels, aphorisms, judgments, jokes, film. It is an endless topic. I myself, I typed in the computer. I typed in, does love exist? The first res response, love does not exist. It is only an illusion to be loved because of a chemical question. The increase of dopamine and acetone in, in the brain. You can say everything. There is he who dirties the word of love and enjoys to dirty it. Then there is who exalts the identity, the mysterious. If I had to choose some phrases that have struck me the most, 
From all of those that I have read, one would be this, from Emily Dickinson. It says that love is all there is, is all that we know of love. It is a very rich line. And then St. Augustine, love is the beauty of the soul. And then I found a sentence that pleased me very much and made me a little bit proud. When we began this experience with the first families in this community almost 40 years ago, and those families are now the ones who are the most formed, we started preparing young couples for marriage. Actually, we had made a choice that was a little bit strange. Together, we prepared young couples for marriage and young friars for the religious profession. And the book, called A Brief Catechism on Marriage, was born. And it has been used by many couples. I remember that one of the strengths that I seemed to understand then and that I was trying to explain, explain is this evidence. When two people love one another, their experience is dramatic because it has the meeting and the possible clash of two limits and two infinities. The two in infinities are obvious. If you ask both people in the couple, how much do you want to be loved? They say, a lot, always more, infinitely more. We are infinite in the desire to be loved. There would never be love. It is the loved being that demonstrates what is dug infinitely within us. We are limited in the ability to love. Just a headache, just a tiredness, just anything. And I know that you are infinite in being loved. But if I am fragile in the ability to love you, here is the clash between two infinites infinities and two limits. This clash to find a solution sooner or later causes anger and even violence. Why was I speaking with that I was a little proud? Because I found this sentence and I told myself I had written it. But then it is not true. This is the paradox of love. Two infinities meet with two limits. The infinite need to be loved clashes with two fragile, limited capacities to love. Only within the horizon of a greater love, the two do not consume each other in the pretense and are not resigned to walk together toward a fullness of which the other is signed. That was Maria Will. And then it also came to mind the beautiful text of Lewis. He said, in love, he says to her and her to him, look at me, what do you remember? It means love is a reminder of something. And then from Gabriel Marcel, he said, when you say to a person, I love you, you say to him, you will never die. Love is the promise of immortality, which must be maintained, but you cannot keep it. Vedete, allora capite come 
when you come to realize that you cannot keep it with much craving and with much desire, but also with much suffering, you will understand that the promise you made to another, you made on behalf of another. This is the mystery. Then you will understand how in love you can say things both very harsh and also great things. Let us return once more to Pope Benedict XVI who in the Angelus of 2009 at the Feast of the Trinity said, the bigger and stronger test that we are made in the image of the Trinity is this, only love makes us happy because we live in the relation to love and to be loved. Using an analogy from biology, we would say that the human being has in its genome a profound mark of the Trinity. You see, this is the setting of the problem. Within this, there is the question. What depends on the fact that love can be an all-encompassing experience and can be a destructive experience? What depends on which outcome is one or the other? It depends on the truth of Christian love. It is not enough just to just say that we need to refer to God. If one studies the history of religions, one cannot be against that in the sacred scripture there is something very impressive. There are many times the author of the Psalms, which are prayers, says the words of sweetness, of tenderness to God, and puts on the lips of God the words of tenderness, sweetness, of mercy, of goodness, and grace, of happiness. It is clear that the sacred writers have the perception that God is love, and that God is merciful, that God is goodness. But then it is as if they do not understand precisely for what happens, for the sensitivity that they have, two thousand years ago, that to survive from one moment to another, God becomes a God warrior. Lord, destroy my opponents, trample them. It's like the Psalms, the authors have the idea that God is love, but when put in direct drive, the love of God with what happens with the infinite hardness of existence, there is need of a God who is transformed into an avenger. And when one, when we're citing the Psalms, you will make a little bit of an effort. This is how they perceived, perceived it years ago. If I have a city that I am besieging, I think of a God love and I think to God who destroys opponents. It is inevitable. Or think of the Muslim world where God is merciful, is good, God wants good. A Muslim would say that God wants you to love your neighbor. 
It is written in the Quran. But when they have to say what it means, they say, I understand all of the difference. Love your neighbor means love in your neighbor those things that you love for yourself. Eh, think about the consequences. I myself, I love a God so it's terrible. But the Gospel says that I love him as well as is. Faith says everything of God, but at a certain point, God requires submission, and whatever the situation at the end, He must win. You are not able to go beyond this. If God is God, say that you can blaze a line, and then you are worthy of forgiveness. It is not so easy. If a Jew had to wait for Jesus, the Messiah, he had to wait for an adventure, a warrior, a wrestler, which in history, in the face of problems, you took the sword and you put it to your head. If you read the Gospel, you realize that this is the problem of all disciples. They say to Jesus, Lord, is this the moment in which reveals your kingdom? When they see him crucified and risen, then and tell him, if you can read it in the gospel they say is it now that you establish your kingdom Jesus replies it is not for you to know times or seasons you go up to the end of the world to proclaim the kingdom of God that is my victory will be from man to man, from heart to heart, from person to person, and not with armies. It is incredible. What has happened in the Gospel with regards to love? Here we must learn something that we would not expect. For example, in antiquity, the word love is linked to the word eros. In the Gospel, the word eros does not exist. Ma tutti i discorsi dell'amore Gesù li fa prima di morire, quando appunto sta morendo, e poi li fa, lo fanno gli apostoli. In Jesus fuori. makes all speeches of love when he is dying, and then it talks about it in the letter of Saint John. Ma nel Vangelo, quando si parla d'amore, Gesù sembra perfino molto duro. Per esempio, dice: Io vi conosco. But in the Gospel, when speaking of love, Jesus even seems very harsh. For example, he says, I know you, and I know that in you there is the love of God. Or Jesus says, In the end of time, the world will cool down. The inquiry will invade the world and love will cool down. It is as if Jesus came on earth to say, you do not know what it means to love. But instead, in the Gospel, there is immediately the word of love. It expresses two words, which is the name that you give to Jesus. When in the baptism of Jesus, the Father says, This is my Son, the Beloved in whom I am well pleased. You should translate it literally, The Son to whom I love. 
Please note that it is the same word that you lose at Christmas when the angels say, Glory to God in the highest heavens and peace to men who now took well. This is the proclamation. The Son, the Beloved, that is popular, totally, in, infinitely loved. Then there are the men. Jesus is placed in the middle of the sinners as if to say, Padre, voglio sentire la voce che sono figlio amato, ma la voglio sentire anche per questi. E da lì dal battesimo. It's as if Jesus said, Father, I want to hear the voice that says they are beloved sons, and I also feel for this. Starting from the baptism of Jesus, he will end up on the cross, and from the cross, even, Lamb of God who brings the sins of the world. Then what is the first word of Christian love? When the Gospel of John says, in the beginning was the Logos. Logos can be translated as the truth. The word. The truth was with God, and the truth was God. The word was made flesh and came to dwell among us. Where is the problem? When we think about love, we immediately think about emotional relationships, more or less sexual, between man and woman. In the gospel, love starts like this. At the origin of everything, there is one which is the Father, the infinite, the immense fatherhood of God, and there is one that is totally the Son. This is love. Then inside the story, there will be the Son who is on earth to do what? Jesus will say, you must be perfect as perfect as your Father who is in heaven. Jesus speaks of everything, even of marriage, and, but has in his mind the Father. Let me explain it this way. The last time I said to you, I listen to people for hours who tell me that their family is going badly, that they have decided to separate, that they cannot go forward like this. It is the problem of families who dissolve and is increasing dramatically. And it is not that they do not want to love. They do not know how to do it. The limit takes over and becomes anger, sadness, malice, always more. However, it is possible that they are Christians who have received the sacrament of marriage. And they speak for two hours of problems that they have between them but without the name of Jesus Christ ever coming out. They speak to you of the pains that, that they have and the fears that they have, but they never speak about the crucifix. However, our idea is that no one has greater love than the one who gives his life for the beloved person. No one has greater love than those who let themselves even be killed for the beloved person. And this is what we believe in. We have crucifixes on the walls. We have them in our heart. We have the Eucharist. And to love means that he has made food. You can eat it. You can consume it. 
We know these things, but they do not come out. Another thing that impresses me even more, one from four or five, meaning from the husband, the wife, the children, do they not stop to say, first of all, first of all, there is something that we do not make for a very long time. Stopping ourselves to reflect on the first truth of love that God is Father. One discovers to say, God, you are my Father. I am your Son. I am your son until such a point that you sent your son to me for me. You have even had the courage to have your son die on the cross for me. I am your son like this. This is what I believe. The Carmelite saints can help us from Santa Saint Teresa. God loves each one of us as if we were unique in the world and organizes the world to the good of each person. I say this, and I'm not saying this alone. I have had next to me perhaps the wife, a child. As soon as I say, as soon as I say, this Christian proclamation I say remember it is not you who knows what is love it is not you who has been loved first he loved you first whoever loves God and is loved by God loves those he loves I love my neighbor not because I receive love and then turn to him only in part I receive love and then I see it descend on the person that I have next to me. I think of people who are really praying our Father and while I say the words of the prayer I know that I am describing myself and the person that I have next to me. If we say Lord, I no longer have the strength. Do not do it more. And I understand and I have all the pain and tenderness for the people who are in difficult situations. I wonder if God revealed something to us, He has given us grace. Where did we go wrong? If God tells me that there is a source of water and all I get is a small stream, it means that somewhere there is a flaw, there is a loss. So it comes to mind, is it not that perhaps all conflicts, all discussions, all inability are based on the fact that we have never really said our Father? non our father which we all say but our father with the start is in the certainty of my heart it is the thing that is most dear in the world and that you are my father I am your son unique because for me you sent your son you gave me the Eucharist, the possibility of being forgiven. But here is what we lack. At every performance of our Father, am I giving an opinion of my life and on the people whom I say to love? Is 
the horizontal position from the aspect of that of our neighbor is extremely important, but it comes after. Here is the truth of love. It comes after. At the origin, there are only two words of love, the Father and the Son, simply. These two words contain the whole. Only that the day when I fell in love with my wife or my husband and of my children, I fell in love and what has happened really happened is that one has seized me and told me I have billions of sons I have to take care of each one I want you I want you to take care of her and he will take care of you. This is marriage. The problem with a couple is not passing time and maturation and joy to rediscover the only essential thing. That is not she is my wife, he is my husband. But to arrive one day to say that, that it is no longer anything and it would be better if he or she did not even exist. But here, I am the Son of God. When it happens that the father, the mother, instead of being the people welcoming, are people, old people that are even in pain, nothing changes. It is another way of being children. I saw my father big and strong to whom I loved very much and then I saw him at the end of his life with his legs cut off but nothing had changed I am just trying to make you understand that we remained like all others there is love, that beautiful love, hugging ourselves. But we have forgotten the truth of love. The gospel thus begins. The Son of God came on earth to teach you the basics, the first principles of love, and that there is a Father. And listen, at the end, after years pass, as you become increasingly old, he becomes increasingly the father. At the end, dying is nothing other than the gesture of the tired child who says, Mom, take me in your arms. It's only that. So, to conclude, God is Father, we are children, then we are lost children, then we have the Son who is prepared to give us his life, and to meet us halfway in all moments to recover, and this is love. The largest Christian truth is that we must love the truth. The truth is that we must love the truth. The truth that we must love is the truth of love. The greatest love is love the truth of love. No, these are not word games. Do you understand? There is no greater love than the love of the truth. 
There is no greater love than to love the truth of love. This has a root. One understands why in the family we must pray. Because it is necessary to speak in a certain way. Because we must forgive. Because we want so much tenderness. Dostoevsky said, I understand the faith. The day I met a woman, she had a baby in her arms and smiled with infinite tenderness. And I said, good woman, what has happened to you? Why are you so happy? She replied, because the child for the first time smiled at me. I understood everything, what is Christianity. It is not a question of doing the sentimentally of the child, but to recognize that what we still try, despite our sins, in front of a defenseless, defenseless child, causes us to be ready for anything, because we are looking at the origin. The relationship between a father and a mother and a small child is a crack that allows you to watch the origin of love, to see the origin of love. You then are able to set your capacity to love on this truth. And then the truth is, I am the son, you are the son. I cannot feel loved if I do not take this casting of fire that is the love of God upon me, and also see it descend upon you. I know this is tiring, that I can have a thousand objections, but it is that this, but it is this that can burn everything and restart again. I would like to say to the young people that are here, When you have projects of affection, you have every reason to have them from a point of view of a couple. But have the courage to go to the origin of the couple. If he is not able to abide in you, the daughter of God, and you are not able to meet him as the son of God, Sooner or later, the couple will not work. Sei capace di rispettare in lui il figlio di Dio? O prima o poi la coppia non, non funzionerà? Perché è così che Dio ha immaginato l'amore. Sia lodato Gesù Cristo.